Okay, so let's get started on our chili while this is chilling. We're going to just let that sit for maybe a couple minutes. So we need a white onion, a knife. It doesn't have a little hairy bit. Leave that intact. Then you're going to cut down. I'm using a pretty small yellow onion, but if you have a big onion, you can probably use just half of it. But it's up to you. I, I don't like as much onion in this chili or in chili, but it's totally dependent. If you really love onion and you're like, I can't have a chili without a shit ton of onion, go for it. Do your thing. <laughs> Come on, paper. I got them at Thanksgiving and they're still good, but um, <laughs> miraculously, uh, I got like a bag of them and there were a ton of really small ones and the onions at Whole Foods have been monsters lately. So I was pretty excited to see these because I usually only use half an onion anyway when they're really big and these are like the perfect size because it's pretty much equivalent to half an onion. So if you pull out the center bit of the onion, uh, it actually helps you digest things better. This little bit in the middle is really hard to digest, especially if there's any green. Very similar to garlic. When you have a little green stem in garlic, you should always pull it out because it'll cause really bad indigestion heartburn for like, you know, 80% of the time. See, that bit popped out easy. That's what I'm talking about. So just cut that out. Howdy, Athlon. How are you? How's your 30-day challenge coming along? Nice to see you. Hope you had a good weekend. I checked out that recipe you sent me for Alton Brown's leeks, uh, onion rings. They didn't have a picture. I was bummed. I really wanted to see what it looked like, but I think I'm going to have to try that at some point. So we're just making cuts across. This knife's really dull. I feel like I'm having to saw. <laughs> and then we're going to go the other way just to get a dice. This is a smaller dice. If you like a chunkier chili, you could do a thicker dice. It's up to you. Throw away the little stem bit. Nom, 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 nom. It's chili time. Da, na, 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 ch, ch. <laughs> Hopefully I don't cry. This one smells pretty strong. I feel like it's going to get me. <laughs> Eyes good. That's good. I'm glad to hear it. We watched um, The Meg this weekend with Jason Statham. I don't know if anyone's seen that. But it was a pretty good movie. I was surprised. I enjoyed it. It was like modern day Jaws. <laughs> I liked it. I love a good Jason Statham. Action packed and all that. Kind of about a, uh, if you're not familiar with what the movie is, it's a deep water diving expedition team discovers some giant beast lurking down below further than, you know, humans have ever gone before. A prehistoric shark called the Megalodon. <laughs> yeah, he did it in an episode calling Sprung a Leak. Of course he did. <laughs> Hello, Think Man. The cooking's going well. Yeah, we're just getting started. We haven't been at it very long. I'm just cutting the first thing up for today. We're making a spicy white bean chili, and the onion's making me sad. <laughs> I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> Have you tried making a math one? You own it, loved it. Oh, nice. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good pleasantly surprised. Okay, so we got one jalapeno chili here. I'm gonna rinse it real quick because we're gonna use the skin. And, ew. <laughs> if you don't rinse it, ew. <laughs> so 
So you can use the whole jalapeno if you want a spicy chili or half, or if you have a not very spicy jalapeno, you can use two. So we're going to taste it to find out how spicy it is. I usually just cut off the tip. That's pretty mild, so I'm going to use the whole thing. It's not really hot. I might actually use two. I don't know. Sometimes when you cook a jalapeno, it gets hotter, so I'm a little concerned. I don't want it to blow my head off, so I might just use the one. I love your cooking and your kitchen. Aw, thanks, Think Me, and I appreciate that. It's nice of you to say. So we're going to cut off the little stem. Isn't that fun? <laughs> it could be a hat for a very small person. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and slice down the side of the jalapeno. And we're going to pop it open, like so. And then we can get a spoon and just kind of scrape right around this membrane. And the seed packet pops out. Then you can just scrape any extra seeds off into your, your garbage bowl. 30 days, no social media is going well. I streamed once and answered some DMs, but that's it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's kind of how it's been going for me, too. I, uh, I, we've been on it for a week now, so I streamed once last week. Last week I didn't get to stream a whole lot, but uh, hopefully more this week. We'll see. We'll see how the week shapes up, but it's nice to be able to talk to people, hang out while I'm streaming. Glad to see you. <laughs> what did you stream this week? Did you do Sea of Thieves? Or are you playing something new? Got a present from your secret Santa. Ooh. Ooh. You'll have to post it to the Discord so we can all see what you got. All right, what am I doing on this? Mints. So there's this rogue seed. Rogue seed. If you want your chili hotter, you could leave the seeds in, too. The seeds are where a lot of the heat is. So if you really want a, a hot, hot chili, you could leave those seeds in, or you could leave half of them in, or whatever, to kind of, you know, suit your fancy. So we're just cutting into really thin, long strips. We've been watching a, recently a new cooking show called Final Table on Netflix. I don't know if anyone's seen that. But man, it makes me embarrassed with my knife skills. <laughs> I know I have no knife skills. I really wish I did. Yep, I did see Thieves. You did? Oh, nice. I'll see you on Friday, I guess, because... Monday passed, and I already checked the media, and there's nothing going on, so I can't check in till Friday, but I look forward to seeing it. I got a package today that I don't think I was expecting, and so I'm wondering if I got my Secret Santa package today in the mail. I have to go down and pick it up still. I noticed it, like, right before stream started, so I didn't have time to go down and get it, but I'm wondering if it's a Secret Santa package. I don't know. I do not to know. All right, so those are going to cook in the same time as the onions, so we're going to just pop them into the same bowl. If you do mise en place cooking like I do, where mise en place translates to everything in its place pretty much before you start cooking, um, I think it makes cooking less stressful. <laughs> you can kind of sort things in bowls based on when they're going to go into the pot, so you don't have to worry about it. All right, we're going to get back to our lazy cornbread here. You can see it's risen a little come up just a bit, which is awesome. And now it's thickened up too, as you can see. So we're going to spoon this into our muffin tins. And I'm going to fill them probably about that full. These are going to be monster muffins. So I'm guessing they're going to cook longer, but I like a big fat muffin. I don't want no dinky muffins. <laughs> I meant to put corn in these too. Shit. Oh well. My knife skills suck. Yeah, I, I'm i always afraid I'm going to cut my fingers off, which I know is silly because if you have good knife skills, you won't cut your fingers off, but I just haven't had the occasion to spend the time to learn how to, you know, really cut things like a chef would. I think I cut things pretty well, but I'm slow. <laughs> I'm scared of speed with the knife. So I definitely like to learn to some knife skills, but I feel
feel like that's one of those activities that you just have to practice a ton to get good at. And home cooks, I don't think, use knives as much as like a professional chef does. So I don't know. Could be a losing battle. But at the very least, they could probably get better than they are. Maybe worth a, a stream stream. Let's practice knife skills stream. We could all get better together. So I'm just going to use the rest of this to kind of make them all the same. It's probably a good thing I didn't put corn in here because then I'd have way too many muffins. I could push some into the top, but I think I'm going to skip it. There's corn in the chili, so normally when I make cornbread, though, I like fresh corn in there. I think it makes a world of difference, but this time we're going to skip it. the oven. We're going to put the timer on for 16 and we'll see where we're at. And that's 375 Fahrenheit. One second. and make some improvements on your Twitch page. Oh, that's cool. What'd you work on? Adding like new graphics or something? I get the results of food sensitivity testing days, so my cooking is about to change. Hopefully not too drastically. Ah, like an allergy test? That's probably gonna be nice to know what you're allergic to and what you're not. So I have some leftover bell pepper and I just wanna use it up because I don't wanna waste it. So I'm gonna throw in half a bell pepper into this as well. And I'm just gonna dice it like I did everything else. stubborn, apparently. <laughs> Again, with chili, you really don't need to worry about things being chopped perfectly. It's all going to kind of do its thing anyway and be chili, rustic, and whatever, so don't worry about having like perfectly sized pieces or anything. It's going to be fine. It's the beauty of chili. It's like a, a lazy meal to make. <laughs> it doesn't require you know, perfection or anything like that. It's really just kind of a casual meal, like a rustic casual meal. I'm just pulling out some of the membrane, the light part of the pepper. I don't really care for that bit, so I usually remove it. Mostly because I don't like how it looks. <laughs> but, you know, you eat with your eyes first, so. Red bell peppers seem to be a little sweeter, so this is kind of going to add a little sweetness. It'll go really well with the corn, and uh, because it's pepper, you know, it'll go well with peppers and onions too, so it'll be glorious. We'll be lurking while I finish up work for the day, expecting nothing but deliciousness. <laughs> All right, thanks for hanging out, T-Bot, and thanks for the host. Enjoy your lurk. Yeah, naturopath testing, I gave up on my doctor. You gotta do what you gotta do. I think sometimes that's the way to go. Hey yo, working late, so got you on in the background. Oh, thanks, Tropics. Hi. Nice to see ya. Hope you've been well. <laughs> Looks like a little Italian flag now <laughs> in my bowl. Red, white, and green. I don't know if they have chili in Italy. Oh, so anyway, I was telling you, I, we started watching this new show called The Final Table on Netflix, and it's actually pretty good if anyone's interested in cooking shows. It's actually a pretty good one. It's got less drama and more about the food, which is what I like in a cooking show, and um, versus the contestants, you know. But uh, it's like all professional chefs, and they're competing in teams of two, and each episode they have to create a dish from a certain country. And there's three judges from that country judging to see how they did. And uh, they make some beautiful things, like really interesting dishes and very well plated and you get to, you know, watch how things work and 
learn something new and they bring in a, a real chef or a, a top tier chef with Michelin stars uh, later in the episode to judge like the worst three of the day to see who goes home. So it's a really good show if you're interested in cooking shows. Just at my panels, updated some info and added in a charity panel. Oh, that's cool. I'll have to take a look. I have indeed. Work has been crazy. <laughs> I can imagine coming up on the holidays. Final Table is so good. Yeah, it's a good show, isn't it? I like it. I'm glad someone else is watching it. I think it's awesome. It's a really good one. We uh, watched India last night. That's where we are. So next up is America, which I wonder what they're going to do for the American one. My guess was hamburgers. But, you know, for India, I also guessed curry, and they ended up doing butter chicken, so who knows? Who knows what they'll make? <laughs> but it's an interesting show. Whoa, this is a green garlic. Look at that. Yikes! You don't want that one. I think this head of garlic might be a little older. I have another one if it's not good. All right, so we need three cloves of garlic. Ooh, that's my phone. Get all the paper off the board here. Sticky. Garlic paper is so sticky. <laughs> Thanksgiving? That doesn't seem like a, a total American thing though. I mean, yeah, okay, we do Thanksgiving, but that's not like the signature thing you think of when you think of American cuisine. I don't go to Thanksgiving. That's not where my mind goes. I don't know. If that's what they do, that'll be surprising. I'll be right back. Back to the garlic. Yeah, Thanksgiving, that's like one of my favorite meals, but I don't know. I really think like, when I think of American food and what we've contributed to the world, my mind goes to like hamburgers and hot dogs, like all American food. <laughs> I don't know. American cuisine's so hard because we're really like a mosh pit of all the other cultures. So I don't know be curious to see. Curious indeed. This garlic's not looking so hot. We're just getting the paper off. Alright, so we're going to get the little ends off of each one. And then any blemishes, so this one's got some dark spots. We're just going to cut those off. Waste not, want not sort of situation here with the garlic today. I could totally get that other head of garlic out, but I feel like I should probably use what we have, you know what I mean? Okay, then we're gonna cut each in half because this garlic is a little older and we're gonna get out the green germ in the middle. And that green germ, like I was talking about with the onion, can cause a lot of upset gastrointestinal intestinal issues, such as heartburn and ingestion and that sort of thing. So just remove it, it's easy. You just cut the clove in half and then pick it out if it needs to come out and it only needs to come out if it's green. 
So if it's yellow, pull it out. If it's green, pull it out. If it's white, and leave it. <clears throat> but it usually comes out pretty easy if you just poke, you know, and it leaves like this little thin canal where it was. So it's a uh, pops out simple. Okay, so now we have our three cloves of garlic. We're gonna chop these up. I always put garlic on another cutting board because garlic is like really aromatic, <laughs> stinky one might say. And if you use it on your normal cutting board, your other cutting board tends to smell like garlic for a while and then everything else you chop on it kind of has a garlic infusion thing going on. So I try to chop garlic on a separate board um, that's less porous. So my Bose block, the really big cutting board I have, it's pretty porous, but this, uh, this little block isn't. Ooh, rogue chunk flying around. <laughs> Garlic sure smells good. can't have chili without garlic, I don't think, either. Kind of seems like one of those necessary things. <laughs> Fresh garlic. All right. Garlic. Now, what do we got going next? Potatoes? Potato, potato, and the bean strain. All right, so we're gonna drain the beans. I'm just using organic, no salt added cannellini beans. Uh, if you want a more beany chili, you can add two cans, but I'm only doing one today. And one can I think is about 14 ounces or close to it. 13.4, so. If you have one can that's like 16 ounces, that's fine too. If you ever get these cans <laughs> of beans in a box, which are more and more common these days, especially if you get no salt added, um, you just flip up the tips here and then fold the top open. It's kind of like opening a milk carton. And then you're going to pinch the top so it flattens out like that. So it looks like it has like wings. And then you can just cut it across and then drain it like you normally would. Which is kind of nice, like if you have like arthritis or something in your hand and opening cans is really difficult for you, you could seek out these paper containers versus the traditional can and then you don't have to fuss with the can opener. So, option. We're just going to rinse these. Make sure to get all the beans out. completely it's fine because we're going to put them in a soup anyway so the extra liquid won't matter and as always rinse your strainer right away you'll thank me later it'll be easier if you do it now than if you wait so there's our beans now we got to get on to our potatoes and I need my kitchen scale for this So we only need a pound of potatoes. You could use Yukon Golds for this or whatever you happen to have on hand. I happen to have fingerling potatoes, which look like really scary fingers. 
<laughs> if your fingers were the size, arr, you know. <laughs> so anyway, we're just going to measure these. These are kind of like a Yukon Gold, though. They're buttery and creamy and just really good. Really good in soups and stews. So I'm just weighing out a pound. These are basically mini Yukons anyway, the yellow ones. Potato, potato. Ooh, that one's bad. <laughs> bad potatoes happen. Wow, this one's huge. <laughs> Perfect. There is a pound of potato. Oh, my emotes got approved. Oh, nice. Oh, those are cute. I like them. <laughs> How fun. Okay. A pound of potatoes. We're going to wash these because we're going to keep the skin on, so we're going to do a little washing here. Oh. Grab my fingers. You want to wash these pretty well because we are going to eat the skin. about it going another minute longer it's fine. If you had kids, this is where a little sous chef would come in handy. Have them wash potatoes, make them feel involved in the meal. Kids are more likely to eat whatever you make if they are involved in the cooking process. So if you have picky kids and you don't think they're going to eat something, like if you're making something with vegetables that they don't care for, if you have them in the kitchen with you and actually make that food with you, they're more likely to eat it because they actually made it. So if you have really picky kids, this is a great way to get them to eat things they might not normally eat. So if you have piggy ones, get them in the kitchen cooking with you whenever possible. I mean, there's lots of things kids can do that aren't dangerous. And if you teach them how to use a knife, you know, if they're old enough, you can totally have them help you there too. All right, I got water everywhere. All right, let's check our cornbread muffins. Looks like they're doming pretty good. But they're definitely too light. They're not done yet. So we're going to put them back in. They're still kind of wobbly. So the inside's still raw. So we're going to probably put them in for another five minutes. See where we're at then. Actually, I might put them in for eight minutes. I think they're going to need a little. <laughs> a little. Christmas, or on my channel now for when I finally come back after the mentality of Christmas. That's cool. How exciting. New stuff. I love new stuff. Okay, so we're going to check, 
chuck chur chur har har har. <laughs> My knife's got garlic all over it. Okay. Let's get rid of that first. Alright, so we're gonna chop these into about half inch chunks or a little smaller, so about that size. That's what we're gonna roll with. And while you're doing this, you can <coughs> uh, <coughs> keep an eye out for any like blemish bits, which you should have noticed while you're washing them. So if it has any, you can you know be aware of it and remove those during this time. So you want your potatoes to be similar sized when you cut them, because otherwise they won't cook at the same time. So this is probably one of the things in this meal you really do need to kind of pay attention to as far as size goes, just because of cooking. Potatoes are stubborn. It's actually a pretty nice fingerlings. Again, if you don't have fingerlings as an option, you can use Yukon Gold potatoes. Those would be really good too. If you don't have Yukon Golds and all you have in your house is russets, you could totally use those. Or if you have red potatoes, or if you had a sweet potato, you could really use any kind of potato. It's really just adding some bulk to the chili and also some creamy and some, you know, nice mouth texture as far as like something to really chomp on in your chili. So whatever you got or whatever you like, use that. All right, there we go. So now let's get our stuff going. We got salsa. We're using Mrs. Renfero's jalapeno green chili hot salsa. And I'm gonna try this, let's see how spicy it is. Dictate how much we add or don't add. I can't taste things by themselves, so I need chips. <laughs> That's not an indication. <laughs> That's hot as fuck, but it's so good. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> Just wow. <laughs> okay, we need a big Dutch oven. <clears throat> My face is on fire. That's so hot. Cornbread's gonna come in handy because put out the flames. Some fresh avocado cornbread will be good. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get the some olive oil heated over medium high heat. I'm probably gonna do half olive, half avocado because I like the flavor of the avocado oil, which we're talking about a little earlier. We're also gonna need a couple other things. Flour and some seasonings. So we're gonna do cumin today. Cumin is really common in Mexican food. Ground cumin is amazing, super delicious. It's really earthy and kind of spicy smelling. It's really yummy. But lots of people love or hate cumin, but 
It just goes. If you like Mexican food, you probably like human, you just don't know it. <laughs> we usually buy it in packets because you can get it cheaper in the packets than you can in the jars. So if you're like, human's really expensive, don't buy the jars, go for the bulk section or packets, which are basically like, they're sold in things like this. And these will be much cheaper per ounce than buying, you know, a jar of whatever is like that. Little trick. <laughs> okay, so we need cumin, flour, Tapioca flour, coconut flour, or AP flour. I'm going to use AP. I have coconut, but sometimes coconut flour does weird things in soup, so I'm going to try to maybe not try that today. <laughs> Since this is a new recipe, I don't want too many unknowns, you know? But you can use whatever you have. So we need two tablespoons of flour. Dutch ovens take a little bit to heat up, so give it time. I'm just reading over my recipe. Side. Half teaspoon of oregano, or quarter teaspoon of oregano, excuse me. Quarter teaspoon of black pepper. It's already going to be pretty hot, so if you don't want it much hotter, skip to the pepper. Or go with white pepper, which is usually a little more mild. And then, what else? Cumin, we're going to do one and a half teaspoons of cumin, so three of these guys. One, two, three. So that's our seasoning. Let's check the muffins. Ow. They're starting to get golden around the edges, so let's poke them with a toothpick and see where we're at. So to check doneness, you poke a toothpick right down the middle. If it comes out clean, they're done. And it looks like they might be. They didn't get as much color as I like, but some cornbreads just don't, unless you put butter on the top. Which if you really want that golden top, you could put some butter on and put it back in the oven for like another two minutes or so on like 500 degrees and broil the tops a little bit. But we're not gonna do that. <laughs> Alright, we got it. We hear you. We hear you, timer. Alright, so our cornbread muffins are chilling. Our pan should be hot by now. It is. So, we are using avocado oil and organic extra virgin olive oil. This company, La Tourangelle, or however you say them, makes really awesome flavored oils. Toasted sesame oil is really good, and avocado oil. Those are my two favorites. So two tablespoons of oil. So we're going to do one of each. I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to roll with what I think is a tablespoon. This doesn't have to be an exact science. If you're on a little lighter, heavier side, it's fine. All right. We're going to swirl to coat the bottom. We're getting some smoke. That's good. And we're going to add in our onion, jalapeno, and bell pepper. Cooking is not 
jalapeno, don't stand right over the smoke because it will like just burn your nose hairs right off. And uh, it gets kind of painful, like your throat will start popping. Bad things happen. So don't get right over it. And if you need to, turn on the fan. We're going to do that for a minute. Because, whoop! starting to get translucent as far as the onions go. My stove heats pretty high, so it might be five minutes, but it could take as many as ten. These are diced green chilies, fire roasted. You can use your own if you roast them by yourself. Starting to get a little color. It's looking pretty good. It's hot as hell. Once some of the smoke dies down, I'll turn that fan off. I know it's noisy. <coughs> so that's fine now. So we need four cups of water. Let it go for like another 30 seconds. And now we're going to add all our dry seasonings. Oregano, black pepper, flour, and our cumin. And we're going to kind of toast this and coat everything really well. Maybe turn that off now. So coat everything really well until the flour is no longer in the pan and completely absorbed by the veg. So you're going for that. Then we're going to add in the potatoes. four cups of water. Now you could also use four cups of broth. We're going to actually use bouillon instead of broth. So we're just using vegetable bouillon, organic. And we're going to add a teaspoon. of this to that. And it's going to be kind of a whopping teaspoon. And you can just kind of stir it right in with the sauce or the broth and it'll kind of absorb off of your, your spoon or your measuring thing so it doesn't like stick and you're not wasting a bunch of it. It'll just come right off. <laughs> So now I need to add corn. This is going to be one full cup of corn. We are going to measure. I might keep it. I like a lot of corn and it will also add some sweetness to this hella spicy salsa. So <laughs> we might add a little extra corn. This is just frozen corn. Nothing special. We're going to crank our heat to high. This 
point, it's really like a dump and stir situation. <laughs> There's just a little prep and then it's dump and stir. Okay, the white beans go in. chilies, which we are going to be using four ounces of green chilies, which is this full container. And I might strain these a little, so I'm just going to use the back of a spoon to kind of squeeze out some of the liquid. So a slightly green can, four ounces of green chili. Green chilies are kind of mild that are like that, so it's not going to be a ton of heat. If you're thinking like, that's a lot of chili. It won't be as hot as you're thinking. <laughs> and then we need salsa. So. I'm not going to use this whole thing. Um, the recipe I'm following is 12 ounces, but because the salsa is so hot, I think I'm just going to use a quarter of a cup. So we're going to just kind of go light on the salsa because it is like, whoa. So a quarter cup of our green salsa. You could use whatever kind you have. This is just the best one on Amazon that I could find on Amazon Fresh. So this is what we ended up getting because my store doesn't have a fresh salsa. You know, I usually like to get a fresh salsa because they have less preservatives, but if you can't get a fresh one, you know, look online and see what ones have good reviews. This one's really good. It's just so hot. <laughs> okay, so we're going to give it another stir. So it's got a really pretty color right now. So that's where we're at. It looks pretty bomb. Um, let me just double check my recipe, make sure we're all good. All right, so yeah, that's all we have to do for that. I'm going to have another bit of the salsa and burn my face up one more time because it's just so good. So while that's happening, usually if you let them sit in the tray for a minute, you can spin them. And uh, just be really careful not to spin the top right off. <laughs> if you do, no big deal. You just have to eat that one. But it's kind of like a gentle twist. Doesn't go one way, turn it the other. And then they can just pop out really easily. <coughs> So they have a nice color. Slightly golden on the sides. This tray is not super hot right now, but it's still kind of warm, so just be careful. Put this back. Our soup is boiling. So we're going to drop it down to a simmer and let it go for 30 minutes. And we'll just stir it occasionally during that time. And uh, at the end of 30 minutes, we're going to check to see if the potatoes are done by just poking them with a the toothpick. So you don't need your lid for this. I 
these will actually cool just fine right here, so I'm not worried about it. I don't need them to cool down completely. They're okay just the way they are, so I'll just let them cool. So that is our vegan white bean chili. Um, when it's done, we can put it into containers and nom 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 nom. But uh, that's all there is to it. So I will post photos of the completed stew later today to uh, Instagram and Twitter. And I will also be posting the recipe later this week probably to my blog at Food Fluent. So if you're looking for recipes, check out that. And if you want to watch my latest vids, uh, you can check me out oops, on YouTube. And uh, links there to my latest channel trailer, which I just updated yesterday, so if you haven't watched it yet, please check it out. Give it a thumbs up if you like it, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. And um, I'm going to go ahead and take off for the day and probably clean up some of my mess. So <laughs> I hope you guys have a great afternoon. Thank you for hanging out with me. And I hope you try this chili. You won't be disappointed. It smells amazing. It's going to be spicy and hot. I'll let you know how it tastes later today as well. So um, hopefully it's all good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so have a good day guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Bye, Traffic!